Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, we, we are going to talk to uh, about Doclipster, uh, a plugin I've developed to integrate Docker inside Eclipse. Um, we, we are going to do a short intro of, of Docker and how we can use Docker in development. Uh, and after that, we're going to talk about Doclipster from a user point of view and from a plugin developer point of view. So let's, let's start uh, with a presentation. So um, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is, is Mario Loriedo. I'm uh, an Italian based in Paris and I'm, uh, I'm the CTO of a small uh, consulting firm in Paris. We, we do uh, Java and open source technology uh, consulting in, uh, in France. Um, so I'm also, for, for a Docker point of view, I'm a Docker certified trainer. Uh, we, uh, we do the official two days training for, for Docker and I'm, um, I'm, I've developed two plugins to integrate Docker in IDEs. The first one was uh, Sublime Docker, a plugin for, for Sublime Text IDE. And the second one is Doclipster that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Is there any overlap for the doing or uh, we we can discuss about that. There is an overlapping, there are differences and we, we can discuss about that uh, maybe when I've uh, terminated the presentation of uh, different projects. Uh, exactly. These are uh, different projects. Okay. That can eventually be merged but we are we we still don't know that. But since there are two different parts, we, we can merge the project, we could uh, uh, have a value for uh, uh, the Linux tools project, but we can talk about that later. So let's first of all uh, see a short introduction, uh, Docker short introduction. This is useful to understand how we, have, we can integrate Docker and, and uh, how valuable it is to integrate Docker inside Eclipse. Well, first of all, uh, if I had like just one sentence to, to explain you what Docker is, I, should say, I would say containers are like traditional VMs. Uh, they are like traditional VMs because we can package our application with all their dependencies in an isolated uh, environment uh, using containers. And uh, the, um, the packaging and the delivery of of, con of application uh, is more simple, e it's easier with containers. And moreover, the containers as traditional VMs uh, optimize the resources of our uh, servers. So we need less physical servers and we, we can uh, deploy many applications on the same uh, physical server. So this is uh, the si similarities with uh, traditional VMs, but containers are different. They are not uh, traditional VMs. And mainly this is because the virtualization of containers happen at the operating system levels. And this means that we don't have to install an operating system inside a container. Uh, usually, in, in virtual machines, we always, in traditional virtual machine, we always have uh, an operating system installed on top of the host uh, operating system. With containers, with lightweight containers te technologies, uh, we don't have uh, this overhead. So this means that uh, from a file system point of view, we are going to uh, use less resources from a memory and, and CPU point of view too. So um, mainly th these are the differences and the drawback of container is that the isolation uh, is, is not as uh, strong as with traditional VMs. But let's see how we can use a container. So to, to run a container, we, the simplest command is the docker run uh, command. So let's try to do that. So, with this command, I've just run a container. 
I've, I've run a container and inside this container there is a Tomcat insta instance that is running that I, uh, I can access from outside the container. And if I want to, to run more container, I can, um, I've just prepared a, a little script to do that. That's, I'm going just to run uh, five instances of, of a Tomcat, uh, Tomcat container, so a container that uh, runs Tomcat inside. So there will be five different container that will run Tomcat. Okay, so as you see, it's, it's really, really fast. Uh, yes, please? Uh, can you repeat, please? Um, okay, usually it listens on one more time. Like, yes. Are all listen the same? Order? Okay, so uh, the question is if all the Tomcat instances here are using the same port, how we can configure, how we can change ports? Well, this is uh, automatically done by Docker because the, um, actually what happens here. I will show it with the command uh, docker ps that shows the list of running container here on our uh, on this machine. So as you see, uh, there are uh, ports mapping. The first one is port three two seven nine three that it's mapped uh, to port eighty eighty inside the container. So inside a container, Tomcat is ex is exposing port eighty eighty. Uh, outside the container. Uh, uh, the um, uh, Docker is exposing it on the local OS interface port 32793 and it, it changed randomly ports every time we start a, a new container. So this is uh, done because we, because Docker when it starts create a, a bridge interfaces that uh, map do containers interfaces with the local host interfaces. So we, we, have, we have seen how to uh, run a Tomcat container. Uh, that's the, the Tomcat part is the name of the image. Uh, we can run a different kind of containers. Uh, Tomcat was a middleware uh, container. We can run also uh, Operating system container. Operating system container will, will says just it has just the files uh, needed by the operating system. It doesn't add, have anything uh, on top. Uh, or uh, application like Java or Jira or uh, custom uh, custom containers, custom images from custom images like the one that I have, uh, uh, like an Hello World that we are going to see later. Uh, so when we are when we use a available image and uh, that's not available on our laptop, we are going to uh, get it from the Docker app or any other Docker registry. So we 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 just uh, execute the Docker run command and Docker run uh, is going to fetch to pull the images from from uh, from the Docker app for for, for us if we don't have it locally. And images are, are made of layers. Uh, so when we transmit, when they are transmitted, uh, layers can be transmitted independently. So that's uh, uh, really uh, fast. And from, uh, from a network point of view, it's, uh, it's an optimization. But if we, if we want to uh, write a custom image, how can we uh, create our image? For example, say that we, we, we want to um, package our application inside a new image that we are going to, uh, to uh, publish and, and to make it public. How, how, can we do, how can we do that? So we can use Docker files. So the, the, the one that you saw on top, it's a, a really simple uh, Docker file that uh, the first instruction is the base image that we're going to, to use. We are going to uh, install stuff on top of that. The second command is a copy command that is going to copy uh, our application uh, artifact inside the web apps 
uh, application in, in the, web app, the web app folder in Tomcat. And uh, finally, the last line is the default command that is going to be run when we uh, execute the docker run command. So it's going to uh, run the Catalina run command. So to, uh, to build that, to create an, the, an image, we can use the docker build command and uh, docker, uh, the docker, the name of the image is the one that it's followed after the dash t uh, flag. So this, this, um, this image that we're going to create is called hello eclipse con. So let's try to do that. So here is the Docker file. So we call it, we are going to create an image that's called Hello EclipseCon. And we say that the Docker file is in current folder. So we can do it like that. Okay, great. So he has done the build. So once he has done the build, we can just do docker run, uh, we can put it on in the background of the, the D flag and use the, the hello eclipse con name of the image that we just created. Okay, great. So as you, as you see here, uh, we, we add Tomcat instances before we have an Alloc Eclipse Con uh, instance right now. So we have, we have created our, we have packaged our application inside an image, we have built it, and we have, we have run it. Okay, so we are going to see that uh, how we can, uh, how we can automate that with uh, Eclipse using the Eclipse plugin. Docker in development environments has mainly two use cases. The first one is to use Docker as a run tool. So the, we just saw that. Uh, we use Docker to run Tomcat, to run Jetty, uh, to run uh, MongoDB or all the middleware where we use to test our application in our development environment. The second use case is to uh, use it as a build tool. So Docker can substitute our build tools. Uh, for example, if we, if we use the Maven uh, image, so Maven image is a uh, uh, Maven, uh, Docker Maven uh, image available on the Docker app that has M Maven, M Maven and all the um, all the dependencies of Maven, so they already packaged an image for us. So we can also, uh, there are many uh, versions of that image, so we can decide which image we're going to use. So we are going to use it here, the default image. So uh, what, what's happened here is that we're going to use the, 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 the official Maven image and we're going uh, to create a new image with our source folder inside and as a default common uh, maven. So let's, let's try to do that too. So here is the Docker file. Again, docker build command, we're going to call it maven doc and we're going to uh, use it the, the docker file that is in the current uh, folder. So okay, we, we just built it, so it took, doesn't take a lot of time. So now we can use it. So in this case, we are going to use it in the foreground. So it's, 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 um, it's, it will run Maven. 
So it's interact. It's a tool that we want to run in in foreground. We want to see the output. Uh, so that's why I put the the ti flags, and uh, I've put the remove flag too because at the end of the execution, I want to the, the container to be uh, to be removed. Uh, we are going to use. Um, So we are going to uh, to 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 use it using the Maven clean install command inside our container. Okay, so Maven is started. Probably it will take some time because it has to download uh, dependencies inside the container. But as you see, as like as if we uh, were running Maven outside in our host, but it's really running inside the container. So uh, if you don't have the right version of Maven, or if you, if you want to just say to somebody to test your project, you can uh, give him um, uh, the, your build image and he's going to use it and he doesn't have to worry about dependencies, etc. Yes? No, uh, that's a good question. So the question is, if the copy command it's uh, creating something like a link uh, or is a reference to something in the host container or is copying everything inside the container. So the answer is it's, it, it, it copy everything. So it does a copy. If you want to uh, just share something that it's in the host, and so that you, you want that the modification that you apply on the host uh, that will be available on the con in the container side too, uh, you have to use volumes, Docker volumes. So that's, that's another te technique. I won't talk about that today, but that's, uh, that's a good question because probably in a development environment, uh, the source code will be shared. So volumes are, are, are a better option. Uh, for that, but I, I didn't have the, 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 the time. That was that wasn't the 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 right way, right time to introduce volumes that are a complicated, a difficult aspect of of, of Docker with links. Links and volumes are uh, advanced uh, advanced topic of Docker. Okay. So this was a short introduction. Uh, let's go uh, rapidly to the Clipser from a user point of view. Um, so f before, before introducing the Clipser, um, I want just to talk about Docker and IDEs, how other uh, IDEs have integrated Docker and, um, and that's, that's a, a, a GitHub page that I've created uh, a few months ago with a list of all available plugins for, for Docker for different uh, IDEs. Um, so there is Sublime Text, Atom, uh, VI, etc. Uh, Visual Studio 2 has a Docker plugin. So Eclipse isn't the only one. So we are going to compare how, how uh, Docker has been integrated in the different uh, IDEs. So the common supported features are, uh, first of all, the Docker file support. So syntax highlighting or autocompletion. The first, uh, the basic thing that IDEs have is Docker file uh, support. Uh, this is for almost any any IDE, there is a syntax, syntax highlighting plugin for, for Docker. So that's the, the simplest thing. So the second thing is to uh, use Docker as a run tool, so to, to use Docker to start our application. So it's, that's the second use case, and the, the third use case is Docker as a build tool. So. Uh, instead of using the build tools that are integrated in our IDE, uh, we, can use, we can use Docker build tool. So that makes uh, even more powerful the, the IDE because we can switch from one, build, from one version of an, uh, an, a build tool to another uh, really quickly. 
Is there a question? Yeah. This is the main benefit you see using Docker as a tool? Yeah, I, I mean, these are the features, the use case of Docker um, inside IDEs. Okay. Okay, so the, uh, the, I will repeat the question. So the question is, what's the benefit uh, to, use, um, to use the Docker Maven image to substitute our build system inside our IDE? Because our IDE already uh, can, uh, can, can build, can use Maven. So, uh, so the... <laughs> I've, I had the, uh, you, 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 that's a, a good question because the, the slide, the, 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 this slide, I was talking about that. I mean, in Eclipse, for example, there is no need to substitute the, the build system. We're not going to need it. Uh, but for other IDEs and for other uh, languages, uh, for example, for Sublime, for Sublime Text, uh, if, you, if you want just to um, give a try to a new language, uh, you don't have to uh, worry about installing um, all the uh, runtime uh, libraries to, uh, to build and to run your application. Uh, and that's, that's, the first, that's the first plugin I've, uh, I've, I've developed for Sublime Text was exactly for that need. I was uh, going uh, often to Docker to the to, to development dojos, so we we just uh, sit with with other guys, other developers to do pair programming and to just uh, test new things. So we often uh, we it happens. So why why don't you why don't you don't we uh, try to do that in Go or uh, why don't we try to do that uh, in Ruby? But we don't have Ruby installed in our machine, so we lost like. 30 minutes just trying to set up the development environment. With a plugin that already uh, bring that environment in your machine, you don't have to uh, worry about installing the, the environment. Yes? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's the that's the, 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 the second reason to to have a repeatable build environment. Uh, you can choose with with Docker. You choose exactly the package you want to have in the image, the version of the packages, and you can share with with, uh, with all your teammates. Okay. So the, the the last one is the Docker Compose support. So Docker Compose is another uh, Docker tool that uh, allows you to compose different Docker containers together. Uh, for example, if your application has different stack, uh, front-end uh, stack, uh, front-end application with a database application, you can just use a Docker Compose file uh, to um, describe the relation between these two containers and when you're going to start one container, the other container will start too. So you can, you can use Docker Compose to do that. So, and you can have integration in uh, IDEs. So the Docker Compose integration is, uh, th there are not a lot of IDE that has Docker Compose integration now, but I think that's uh, probably the most in interesting thing. So it's a, uh, it's a pity that it's not installed, uh, that it's not available for uh, other IDEs, but as you will see, we that's uh, probably a next feature for uh, for the Clipser. So, uh, talking about the Clipser, the Clipser um, has the, the these these are the feature that the Clipser has. Um, it's a uh, it's a Docker file editor, uh, first of all. So you, you can you, it has syntax highlighting, but you, it 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 can auto completes uh, Docker file and uh, validate uh, the, the Docker file syntax. Uh, the second part is running Docker commands. So uh, you can, 
you can there are uh, a, a few commands, uh, basic commands that you can run, and we we are going to 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 see that that right away. I'm going to show you with a little demo. So this is an. Uh, Spring MVC uh, project that it's it's going to just show a really a basic uh, web page uh, with another word message. So that's from a development point of view, it's really basic thing. Uh, and we are going to use it. We, we we are going to run it inside a container from uh, from Eclipse. So how how can we do that? Uh, so we can write a Docker file. Uh, as as I saw, as I said before, so you in Docker file with, with the Clipster you have the autocomplete. So we can, for example, we can add maintainer. Here, okay. So we can save it, and if we write something that it's not a valid instruction, it will. Uh, there will be an error that will is, is is shown here. So this is the the Docker Docker file uh, Docker file support. As as we will see, it's uh, done with an it's an Xtex plugin that uh, that implement that. Um, so once we have a Docker file here, so the Docker file does uh, basically what we saw before. So it's it just going to uh, install to copy our artifact uh, from uh, our target directory inside uh, the container. So we can just select the Docker build command from from here. So as you see, it's exactly the, the same output that we see uh, in from the command line. So once we, we have done that, we can just run Docker. And there is the Docker run command. So here is the Jetty output. So it's it's the, the same output that we, we would have uh, if, if we had run it from the, the, the command line. Um, so the, now, as we saw before, uh, if we want to uh, access the application, we have to find which is the port that it has been mapped. Uh, so we, we, we can do that with the Docker PS Common, we, we did it before from the command line. We can do it is from here. So it's showing all the all the uh, information of every every container that it's running. So the container that that's running now here, it's the, that we the we, we just run is the the first one. Uh, the port, the public port, is this one. So we are going to use it. Okay. Okay. So it's it's running here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change something in this page, and we're going to uh, to uh, reload the application. So the first thing is we we have the Docker remove uh, command that stop and remove the the container we just ran. Okay. So well, the page is not available now because we, we just stop it. So let's change that. For example, uh, we can just add 2015 to the to the mail welcome message at the beginning. Okay. So we uh, make sure to. 
to generate uh, the, the artifact and we can just at this point we have the artifact that we can build our container again here it is we can run it Okay, it started. So we can see w which port is running. From here. Oops. So it's 95. Okay, so he added the 2015 year. So we, we just uh, developed our application, uh, we did the Docker build, Docker run, and we are, uh, we are using Docker from e Eclipse to uh, run our application. So th this is it. I, we, we saw all the comments uh, for, for the, the, the Eclipse. Uh, plugin. So now let's uh, rapidly. I'm going to be fast here because we don't have uh, much time, at, I guess. Okay. So um, basically, uh, Docker file support is provided with uh, uh, Xtext plugin that uh, here I've written the Xtext I've copied from uh, uh, the the Xtex file, uh, the definition of the from instruction, so you see it's really, really straightforward and with this Xtex definition uh, for all the instruction of Docker files that aren't a lot, uh, we, we have uh, syntax highlighting at a complete and validation. Uh, there is also, it's really easy to unit, uh, unit test this grammar, so, uh, and the, the project, uh, by the way, is available on, on GitHub, so you can find it easily. Um, the, the run of container is uh, provided using the Docker, uh, a Docker IPE library that it's developed by Spotify and we uh, use Eclipse jobs to, uh, to execute the common uh, in the background. The, the delivery, the automation of, of the, 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 the creation, the, the build is uh, probably one of, of the most complicated thing that I had to do. Uh, so the, um, when, when you do a push right now on, 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 on this repository, uh, uh, it's automatically uh, built uh, by CircuitCI using Maven, Maven and, and Tyco, and it's deployed on Bintray using the uh, Bintray API. And it's it's available. It's a new version. In, it's it, the version is incremented, and uh, it's available for user at at Bintray. So uh, all the details are on the on the source code if you uh, want to have a look at that. Uh, so uh, issue the issue the current issue is the Docker files uh, name as a limitation. It has to be Docker file. You can call it uh, whatever you want. Otherwise, it won't have the extext nature. Um, volumes and links aren't available. We, 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 we don't have volumes, we can't set volumes uh, from the Docker file and we can't set uh, links uh, for, with, with container. So that's, that's a limitation and the other limitation is the manual configuration. So the, the next step will be to uh, provide uh, um, a, a, a way to configure the, the, the run of the, the containers with uh, a widget and uh, actually Java 6 is not supported so these are the, the current limitations and uh, for the roadmap uh, so we, we want to introduce the uh, docker file from the file new menu item um, quick fixes so if uh, there is an error of you, you have a syntax error on the docker file a quick fix can be can be easily um, provided uh, remove the limitation docker file main uh, make the docker properties configurable via the UI and uh, support docker compose files too uh, so this is the end of the, the presentation just uh, a last talk 
last um, just w 30 seconds uh, for uh, the, the confusion that we, you had at the beginning with the two plugins, uh, the Linux tools plugins and this plugin here, the Doclipser. Well, th these are different plugins because you don't have Dockerfile support uh, in, you don't have currently Dockerfile support in uh, Linux tools uh, plugin. So it, it gives you, for, uh, the, the Clipser gives you the, uh, the, the a way to um, edit uh, and develop your Docker files from Eclipse and you don't have this from Linux tools. But in Linux tools you can manage all your containers and your images. Uh, it's really, really uh, a good plugin to manage uh, your Docker containers from Eclipse. So that's it. Uh, you is don't, don't uh, remember to uh, to evaluate the, the session. Uh, thanks a lot. If you have questions, I'm available here till tomorrow. Thank you.